Li and Li was among the first to push the boundary of how you can control your fans. First we had the cable mess, then we had the proprietary one cable rules them all approach which frankly worked quite well if you ask me. And now we have arrived at wireless fans. This is or these are the Li and Li Unifan SL wireless. And if you're asking yourself why I put wireless in quotes here it's because unlike what the tinfoil head society might tell you, you cannot make a fan ramp up just by thinking hard enough. But Li and Li still tried. The new SL wireless series of fans has basically two versions, one with an LCD in the middle and one without. Then there is a normal and a reverse spinning version and then we got the black and whites. For this video we will solely focus on the SL120s or pretty much the most basic version of the series. And before we go any further I want to lift the curtain on that whole wireless thing. No, these fans are not, definitely not wireless. It's it's one of the biggest marketing stretches of that word. They still have the Lee and Lee specific type of connector that attaches on one of the borders. But coming out of that thing, all we got is a PWM plug where only two wires are left, ground and 12 volts to be exact. So no, the cable doesn't control anything. All it does is provide power. To control the fan, or the fans, or the fans, because we can still daisy chain them using that Lee and Lee style mechanic, which is removable in case you run into any problem. Anyway, once you want to control them, we get into that wireless part. Included in a triple box of SL fans, we get one of these. This is the new Lee and Lee controller, which basically replaces that hardwired thing that we had before. You can connect it using two methods, either by pulling off the cap, revealing a USB type A plug and hooking it up to the rear I.O. or front if you really want to destroy the aesthetic of your PC, or internally using the included adapter with an USB 2.0 and PWM port. From there it's almost like it was in the past. You install L3 Connect and you can do whatever you want. The only difference is that you now first need to go into that SL wireless fan utility section and there you need to connect every fan that the wireless controller can find. And now where we are already on the connection part of this. Also included in the triple box you will find this SATA 2 triple two wire PWM adapters. This is so that you can run the three fans included in the box apart from each other if that is your goal or if you got a block and your PWM header on the motherboard can't handle the fans because you can also connect the fan to the, a very regular PWM or even three pin header. N nothing is, uh, is stopping you there, but if, you are, if your chain is too long and your header has like half an amp, then yeah, you might need the SATA adapter. In case you get the single pack, you will only get one of these so-called receivers, basically an expansion box, but I was told that you can get the controller separately, so technically running only a single one of those is doable. I just don't see it as very useful. Also important to note on that whole new L wireless sync thing, each controller can control up to 10 devices and each PC or each instance of uh, L3 Connect supports only a single controller. Hence you are limited to 10 fans if you are running this series. So mystery lifted, these fans are really not wireless. The, the way you are controlling them is wireless, that's all. Now let's also talk a bit about the usefulness of this, I, I don't know. For me. It was indeed incredibly useful, but I'm like the nichiest use case there is. When I'm forced to use proprietary software to benchmark a device, I always have a secondary PC that does the controlling part to be sure that the main PC which is doing the work isn't affected by the software or I don't need to install more software on it later on so that the machine stays in the original state. This usually involves a lot of cables and like a very uncomfortable sitting position but in this case I was able to do it from like across the room which yeah really useful but that was just me. In a regular build uh, if I'm building a PC for somebody or for myself I, I, I mean I, I just don't know why. If you're you are running a cable anyway and who cares if it has two inst instead of four wires. The only useful part that I can see now is that the controller is gone. But on the other hand it's replaced by an incredibly thick stick which sure it mounts to the rear I.O. but that thing is really thick and I don't want to like waste a port on my rear I.O. which then okay I can mount it inside using the adapter but then I have a controller inside again so 
Maybe you could argue that you can create a triple block and run it off a single PWM header on the motherboard, which maybe that's more convenient, but I'm just not getting how that is supposed to be a better solution than what we had before. So yeah, I, I don't know. For me, it's just replacing one not so good thing with a slightly different not so good thing. It, it, uh, but I let you be the judge of that, and for now we'll continue with the fan. The SL120 non-LCD that we are talking about today is an up to 2000 RPM fan, pushing up to 64.5 CFM at up to 2.44 mm of H2O and up to 28.5 dBA according to spec. It is still a Lee and Lee fan, so we still got that ARGB lighting all across the fan, this time two individual zones, the thicker one close to the blades, and then the outer one going around the metallic looking caps. Again, very mesmerizing, very bright, I don't, I cannot count the LEDs, they did a good job there. As I said before, Lee and Lee left what was working. The interlocking system is still there, as well as the whole hiders, which can be reinstalled after the fact. And as usual, the fan is still 28mm thick and very sturdy, but a lot has changed in comparison to previous generations, and not in a good way. You see where, for example, the TL LCD reverse fan had a wall thickness of 4.9 and 7.1mm, the new SL wireless on the other hand, they have 9.1 and 6.9, a significant increase. Or for example, the TL120s, which had 8 and 5.6. No matter which older Lee and Lee fan I pulled out of the shelf, every border was thinner than the new one. And across the board, I think these fans have incredibly thick walls compared to, to the wings. Granted, the central hub is quite small at 36.7 millimeters diagonal, but the wingspan is just small. And in the past, like for example the QX fans from Corsair, that didn't go too well. And in this instance it, it didn't go too well either. Letting them spin at their max 2000 RPM on our case simulator revealed that I was right. At 44.2 degrees C above ambient, they weren't particularly good. A margin of error away from a pair of Arctic P12s, which isn't necessarily a bad spot, but considering what these cost and how fast they spin, it should have been much, much better. But hey, at least they outperformed the Corsair QXs, so there's that. Then we made the fan spin slower and slower and noted down the noise and performance in 10% steps, which did make this slightly better. Now, to be clear, these are no top performers, they, they just aren't. But what they are also not is loud. Thanks to that, they do not start off at an ungodly noise level. The problem, however, is if you take a louder fan and make it spin so slow that the noise level matches, well, the TL or the P28 from Lee and Lee are playing better. And so are the Noctia NF-A12X25s or the Arctic P12s, under all circumstances. But I do not want to paint an all-black picture here. There are still a number of 120mm fans that are worse, far, far worse. It's just, out of all the Lee and Lee fans that we benchmarked using this new setup, the SL120s just aren't particularly good. As case fans, or as radiator fans. Letting them run at max on our 80mm radiator and measuring how low they can keep the water temperature above ambient revealed that these aren't particularly talented at anything. Keeping the water at 13 degrees C above ambient, they just aren't even close to where I expected a 2000 RPM fan to be. For the noise, it's again a bit of a different story. They aren't particularly loud, thanks to which they start off right in between the Uni TL RGB and a Fandex M25, and making the fan spin slower and slower, from there raises the temperature just slightly, but the noise falls enough so that the new SL fan blends in somewhat nicely with all the other Lee and Lee fans. Unoptimized. If I had a single word to describe this or these fans, it would be unoptimized. I, I just don't get what Lee and Lee was thinking here. I guess we can all agree that calling a fan wireless because you move the controlling aspect of, of the fan outside of the case while still leaving the power part where it was is, is like a big stretch of something being wireless. That would be like calling a pair of headphones wireless because you transmit the music via Bluetooth but there is no battery so you still got a cable for power. That, that's just not very wireless C if you ask me. And I would be ready to ignore that mental gymnastics there if the fans were incredibly well performing and leaving everybody else behind but they're just not. Not even close. Neither case nor radiator, they are actually quite far behind, even compared to older Lee and Lee fans. That said, they aren't loud, I will give them that, 
but I'm not a big fan of saying something is good because it is not loud. You know what is even less loud? No fans. And that's also a dumb idea. And for a price tag of about 30 bucks per fan or 27 if you buy them separately, I, I just don't get it. Sure, the whole external controlling stuff is new and very useful in if you benchmark across the room, but I don't see it as useful if you actually build a PC. Why not just save that USB port and just route the cable once and then never look at it again? Cool idea, but the actual application of it just seems kind of useless to me. Oh, and one quick thing that I wanted to mention before we end this, the new SL series is mixable. We will cover the LCD version next week, but already now, as long as you're using the LCD version of the connection cable, you can mix match the LCD and non-LCD fans, technically also the reverse spinning ones, so you can create an up to four fan block, no matter which SL fan, that, that works, nobody is stopping you this time. But okay, this should be all for the new Lee and Lee Unifan SL wireless. And at this point, a huge thank you to Lee and Lee for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to hire somebody to explain to me the meaning of wireless. Maybe I'm just in the wrong here. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Icepack Thermal fans. They might not be wireless, but they are pretty good. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.